Welcome to Mother Nature's Pharmacy. That's pharmacy with an F. Today's guest is Shuzu Okuzu, the founder of Apothecary. Backed by 5,000 years of science, Apothecary provides natural alternatives to synthetic skincare and drugs. Apothecary is on the forefront of the rising adaptogen market. And what's interesting is it's it's really trailing behind the CBD market. And so if you're into CBD, but it's a little too taboo for you, then adaptogens become the perfect fit. Not sure what adaptogens means or what you're supposed to do or how to consume them? Make sure to watch the full episode because we're going to pose the questions we know everyone's thinking and are too afraid to ask. All right, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're talking to Shizu, founder of Apothecary. People who don't know, what does your company do? Apothecary is Mother Nature's pharmacy. We provide pharmacy with an F. Exactly. I love that tagline, exactly. by the way. Sorry to cut you off. No, all good. We provide clean alternatives to over-the-counter supplements and kind of like melatonins, laxatives, um, really anything that like if you walk into CVS and Walgreens and you see those pills and pills of capsules and just opaque bottles. We wanted to provide plant versions of all of that and provide clean alternatives so that you live a better and healthier and longer life. And people don't know, so we're talking about the adaptogen market. Um, I'm going to go 50-50 on the audience here. 50% 50 probably know exactly what that is. I I would say the other half is still learning or has heard of it. How do you explain it to the novice? Yeah, so, well, Apothecary offers herbs as, like, one of the primary, like, ingredients of everything that we do. And so herbs can also be adaptogens, but they can also be so many other things. But adaptogens is a subset of the categories that we offer. And adaptogens would be, like, mushrooms. So you've probably heard of, like, ashwagandha, ginseng, even maca, uh, astragalus, cordyceps, a bunch of these weird-sounding names that have recently become much more popular. But adaptogens help to actually regulate and adapt your hormones and cortisol levels to your external factors and that's why it's called adaptogens but it helps to again like regulate your cortisols to your environment so stress is a little bit more less at base if you just think about like a chart like this like a wavy tipsy topsy turvy chart this it more regulates it after you take the adaptogen and what made you want to start the company in in this space like what was the thing you were like you know what first of all i'm a fan and then second of all how do i let's go ahead and start a company Yeah. Um, Well, it was a long journey. So my first company, so taking a back step, uh, I graduated from college. I was born and raised in Vancouver. My parents were Japanese. And I say that as like an important kind of history because a lot of what we do today is tying 5,000 years of Eastern tradition and Japanese traditions, Chinese medicine, herbal traditions from the East and coupling that with the world that is today in the West. And so Western prescription drugs coupled with Eastern tradition, herbal medicine. And so anyway, I graduated from college in Vancouver. I moved to New York. I worked in Wall Street for about three years. So I was at Goldman doing distressed investment and bond trading for like a weird two, three years of my life, but like really kind of kickstarted my journey into wellness because I was so unwell. Like I was, you know, working trader hours. So that's basically like, you know, wake up 4 a.m. slash like your brain is never really turned off because the markets are always on, like in Asia to Europe and everywhere. And then I'd be at my desk by like five or 6 a.m. I'd go home at like eight o'clock or nine o'clock if I didn't have like a, a sales event or something after. And so having done that, I think like there was a a point where I hit just rock bottom. I I think we all have kind of hit rock bottom. Maybe the last two or three years has also just been like a world reset on that. But anyway, so I I realized like I didn't want to live my resume virtues any longer, like just my resume virtues. And so investing in my eulogy virtues as if like, at least with my parents, they were Buddhist. And so in Buddhism culture, you're very close to like identifying with death. Like that is a real thing and therefore you want to live and maximize your life as long as possible and live your fullest. And so I moved to Mozambique for about a year and a half. And then from there I moved to DC. I started my first company, which was a cold pressed juice brand because in Mozambique we had such like fresh and adulterated ingredients and fruits and vegetables that you can just like make smoothies and juices. And I was like, I miss that. And I didn't know why it didn't exist in DC. Um, So in 2012, I created the first sort of cold press juice brand in DC. We had 13 stores and then ultimately (laughs) took a lot longer than I imagined as it always does. Uh, In 2019, we sold the company and then Apothecary started kind of like on the side of that journey, uh, like late or early 2019 um, as a sort of, you know, as I was getting older, fruits and vegetables alone aren't going to solve like your sleep and stress problems, your hormone problems. And so naturally you'd go to like a a pharmacy to see if you can get some supplements for that. I was like, this, this is nasty. It was just like, this is, this is not 
like, I'm not buying it. And so that's when I started to really tap into and kind of go back into my roots. Literally. Why, why Mozambique though? Out of all the places you could have gone to in the world. Yeah. Um, well, so during Goldman, um, because I was marking the books. And so what that means is like an analyst, like you're marking the books for her PL every single day. So a Goldman rule in the, in the SEC is like, you have to take off 10 days consecutively without having any tie to your Blackberry at the time. And I, that was amazing, right? Like you fully got 10 days off. You didn't have to work. So I was like, I'm going to go climb Kilimanjaro. So I moved to, I went to uh, Tanzania, climbed Kilimanjaro, and I loved just the experience of Africa. Like it was just so new and like nothing was there. There's no infrastructure. And so I came back to, to New York and then Dodd-Frank changes were happening with like the rules of Wall Street where you couldn't invest like proprietary trading anymore. My boss left and I was like, okay, well, time to reset. This is the opportunity. I was interested and started to like meet people in the world at TechnoServe, which is a nonprofit that connects business people to help job creation in emerging markets. And so an opportunity came up in Mozambique as an investment advisory consultant. So I didn't get paid for a year and a half, but they cover your food and your hotel and like your lodging. And so I think I actually saved money with that even because I like I just- the cost of living there is also oh, drastically it's lower. so cheap. It's yeah. very cheap. Yeah. And it's- the best food and like seafood is like literally right there. It's in Mozambique. And like, it was just an amazing experience. I definitely got like malaria once, <laughs> but so yeah. You had this press juice company company. Why did you sell it? It was time yeah. and I was doing it for 2012 to 2019. So like seven, eight years. And I had an earn out through COVID and I was just like, I'm done. And like, I think it was a combination of like, I just stopped learning because with in the cold press juice space, when you have stores and locations, it's a formula. It's like, you kind of know the four wall unit economics and like, you're not really learning as much. And I am a learner. And I think all on, a lot of entrepreneurs, I think there's three types of entrepreneurs, right? There's a creator, there's a builder, and then there's the ender. And I am kind of a builder, but I'm definitely a, like more at the creative heart. Like I am a zero to $20 million kind of like growth rate within the next, the first three, five years of the business. And so that was kind of where I was at. And I was like, okay, well, like I'm approaching the building and ending stage now. And I'm like, I think it's time to kind of like hand this off to the next person. My eye was already at apothecary. Like I wanted to, I don't want to be a big fish in a small, small pond. Like I'd rather be fighting for like the big pond, even as a small fish. And I'd rather be around people like that and like learn. So you're opening, you had a little location, a little pop-up at the line hotel. Yep. Pretty dope. What did you learn? What are you learning in real time? So we open officially this weekend. So the landing page on our website's officially up today. And so we officially open this weekend. Um, what we've learned, let's see, um, I think herbs are still really new to people. You know, we're slowly and knowingly kind of going in, opening this location as like an educational museum. Like I think it was a conscious effort to say, what would apothecary look like outside of its website? Like if you actually ask the question to many brands, I think like visualizing what a brand looks like, like this, even like what does their store look like? It helps to actually like provide a brand ethos and halo around the company that I think we never really invested in until this point. And so an opportunity came up where we could partner with the line, have our like a co-branded Jet Set Pharmacy pro product in all of the hotel rooms across DC, um, LA, Texas, and then soon to come SF. And so we just jumped on the opportunity. It's one of those things that like you just don't say no until you try, right? <laughs> you know, you're learning. So what we've learned is um, herbs are still like a very new thing for a lot of the Western kind of world. We're also learning that like we want to drive in more educational events and like intimate hours around like certain topics like adaptogens or herbs for stress, bringing in an expert around like making an herbal tincture, like bringing in and that people are really craving IRL right now. I think like, especially if we're thinking of a recession, like you're not, you're going to spend money while getting an experience at the same time. And so I think that's where we're going to double down for the rest of the summer as well. And in terms of what, what are like the dumb questions? What are the things you have to debunk every time? Just like the top three. So I can imagine one of them being, do I feel it? Do yeah. I get it? Am I smarter tomorrow? Like I, I can imagine someone asking you yeah. like, Oh, how do I know? Yeah. It worked. Do you get that a lot? Um, what are the things you get a lot that annoy you? I, I just, it's less like, does it work so much as how do I use it? Okay. I okay. think that's a big one. What do you mean? Actually. Like, do you snort it? Like, what yeah, do you, like if you, if you <laughs> look at this, it's like, how do I, how do it's I powder, use it? Yeah. Right? It's powder. It, it, yeah. 
So it's not it's not so into like it's on the packaging. It literally says add liquid into it, but it's not mm. so intuitive where you just open the can and drink it. And so, yeah. so, so it's not like a squeeze the bottle. It's, you know, yeah. it's more of how do I ingest it? How do I ingest it? What is the best way to consume it? And so I think from that perspective, we're also realizing like we need to be a content machine. And so at the store level, also creating engaging content every day on like a daily dose recipe for this day, a daily recipe for this, and like showcasing how to use it. But also, like a new format is needed. So I, I, we're we're going to come out with our first sort of like new format in Q4 outside of powders. That's more of a ready to consume product versus something like this where you have to is actually it a drink? activate it. Or um, it's liquid, but it's not a drink. Okay. Yeah. So you just pour it into out. something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I got it. It's MCT more potent. Type. Okay. Yeah. So with powders, what's interesting is like <clears throat> it's food is medicine, right? So you combine it with foods, and it, that is how you consume it. But in the in the east, you actually boil herbs, like whole herbs, usually for like 24, 48 hours, and you, you drink them. it. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. People aren't going to do that here, though. So we want to commitment. Mi- we're going to do that for them, mm-hmm. and then they'll have that sort of tincture and or potent extract at their fingertips, and all they need to do is like take it under their tongue. So it's actually much easier and consumable. And we think of it more as like, how do we get into your daily dosing routine at like velocity as well? So when I think about, okay, so let's talk about like the, the content and what that looks like. So in my head, I can go, okay, this meet Diego. Diego has coffee every day, blah, blah, blah. Diego yeah. adds a little bit of da, 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 to the coffee. What are some of the other moments, like even people listening who are just like, when do I use it? Oh, I don't drink coffee. So yeah. Maybe I just drink tea. Maybe I don't like it in my morning routine. Yep. And so when would you... Like, what are all the opportunities for the content besides yeah. coffee? Yeah, so we have a great, our number one skew is called Stop Your Whining, right? So it's Stop Your Wine Ing, and it's literally a blend for alternative wine. And so it's red, and you just so people, add you it. put it in your wine. Well, no, it's it's to it's an alternative to so wine. You don't so drink wine. What do you, you don't what do you, So what you do get you? the same wine glass, okay, right? The yeah. moment you're like, oh, I'm going to like open that glass at Wait, 5 Wait, can o'clock. you put it in your wine, though? I mean, you could, but would it, it would kind it of defeat, defeat the purpose. The purpose. Yeah. Court, what? <laughs> it's also like it sounds, so like distressing. If you like, add chaga to wine, I mean, you could. I haven't done it, but I let think me this know, is a Diego. I would love you to see that. Could add any liquid, right? I'm just saying. It's like, what are you getting the maximum <laughs> benefit knock out it of until we <laughs> That's until true. we've destroyed That's the true. opportunity That's true. completely? <laughs> I mean, like actually, like this, this this drink, yeah, yeah. drink. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would add this with stop your whining because it's non-alcoholic. Okay. Um, it has uh, a little bit of sweetness to it. It's sparkling, and okay. so the sparkling nature is what we're you know is like a great alternative for alcohol. Okay. It's like you get that fun kind of component. So I can with put some the of this sparkles. maca in this Ouroboros. You could. I'm gonna do it. You totally could. But there's also like the dosing spoon and like that's that. part of the ritual. And so anyway, the stop your whining, essentially you would add that to like sparkling water or a okay. little bit of juice and okay. then you use a hand frother and mix it up and then you take a drink. Okay. Yeah. What else? What other opportunities are there? Uh, we have a blend called Blue Me Away, which is like literally blue. You actually blue matcha. Had it. I ingested yep. it. Yep. So delicious. It's amazing. Yes. Um, people add that to milk and you can have that as like a like a, a blue latte. And so that is also like a content thing. People love taking photos of it because like who knew you could drink blue milk, like Smurf milk. <laughs> like um, straight out of Star Wars. Li- literally <laughs> straight out of Star Wars. Um but a lot of our blends, again, are like alternatives to X. And so we have that wine blend that's an alternative to wine. We have Slay All Day, which is an alternative to coffee. We have things that like are to not re- create ex- new routines in your life, because you have enough of that already, is to kind of make your current ones better. We'll be right back to the episode after this quick break. <laughs> Warby Parker offers everything you need for happier eyes, and you can shop with them online or in stores. Check out Warby Parker's home try-on program for yourself. Order five pairs of glasses to try at home for free. It ships free to you and includes a prepaid return shipping label. Try five pairs of glasses at home for free at warbyparker.com slash ship it. This episode is also brought to you by Fight Camp. They offer thousands of classes with new workouts added each week, so you'll always find something new. You can get a killer workout done in as little as 20 minutes. And don't worry if you don't have any boxing experience, because Fight Camp has your back. They've created programs specifically designed to teach you the basics of boxing and kickboxing, so you can build a strong foundation. Fight Camp even comes with all the gear you need to start boxing from home, including a freestanding punching bag, boxing gloves, quick hand wraps, and smart punch trackers that provide real-time data during your workout. 
So head on over to joinfightcamp.com slash startup to storefront and get free shipping with your first order. Now, back to the episode. People after COVID can't sleep. And it's like also very sad. Why is that? The, why is that the case? I mean, we're on our phones so much more than we were before. Like we didn't, we don't go out as much, you know, as we used to. And so like that routine has now been replaced by like staying at home and working and then maybe opening a bottle of wine and then watching some TV, being on your phone and then going to bed versus before you live in LA and you go out and like you'd have that freedom. And I'm sure it's coming back now, but COVID is still a thing. And so, but mental health, I think, I think COVID also made people a lot more woke, quote unquote, or aware of the problems that they never really acknowledged in the past. And it kind of like came to a, a head during COVID and kind of recovering through that. And I should, so I should yeah. try the sleep one. I can't yeah, sleep so, at all. I don't, but I don't It's weird. It's like, I'm, this is the problem, right? So I'm, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go to bed. And I could have played three hours of tennis. So like, so I, my body tired. should be tired. Yeah. Like I'm, you know, I'm tired. I had a good meal. I had my one glass of wine. I'm like, all right, it's bedtime, yeah. I think. And then I go into bed and I'm like, man, I can't wait for tomorrow. I can't wait for <laughs> that all in latte <laughs> in the morning. And I'm just like, oh man, like if I go to bed now, do I wake up? Do I, do I know I was sleeping? How soon does oh that latte God. hit? And I play this in my head until it's like 1 or 2 a.m. Oh, my God. And then I just go to bed and I wake up at like 6.30, 6.45, no alarm it's every like day. It's like five or six hours of sleep. Every day. That's and it. I'm like, I'm almost to the point now where I'm like, maybe I just don't need to sleep. Maybe my body is like, you really don't need it. I think like, we're literally. both looking mm. at you like. No, it's weird. Yeah. It's weird. Like, I, like, I'll have days where I play three hours of tennis. I've exhausted my mind. So I know that's also just doing its thing. Yeah. And I wake up and I'm fine. And I'm like, I'm ready to do it. I need a solid 14 hours a night. <laughs> really? No. 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 Makes a eight. Like far seven, eight-ish. Uh, yeah. That wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> I'd, say, I'd say eight. <laughs> solid eight a night. That's too much. Yeah. I used, anyway. <laughs> Everyone I'm, is different. Yeah. I need, like, right. For sure. Sleep, yeah. For sure. But I need to, I need to, I don't know. Because before I was so disciplined, like 11 bedtime, yeah. 645, wait, like yeah. it just happened. I had a nice rhythm going. And now it's all broken. I love waking up at 5 a.m. I wake up at 5 oh, a.m. Nice. every day. And like that happened during COVID because our team is mostly on the East Coast. And so, yeah, I love waking up at 5. It's like you get everything done before everyone kind of wakes up in some ways. And then you go to yoga and then like the life, wake, everyone else kind of wakes up. And yeah. it's like, it's like you just, you've already done half your day, it feels like, yeah, which is amazing. Like what's the thing that keeps you up at night? And I don't mean like a literal competitor. I mean yeah. like- like, it, what's the culture, right? What is the societal thing in America that you're competing with? Pharmaceutical. Yeah. For sure. Everyone's like just I, used I think, to going to like a Walgreens, getting the drug. Yeah. The, the, it's the drug, I think, part where... The behavior of that. Mm -hmm, the yeah. Quick, the quicker fix. Okay. Right? And I think of... One, actually, this I thought this was really important feedback for us is like when we were doing the diligence and investor process, like we met one investor that was like, like for our later rounds of like growth rounds. And so she was like, don't look at like, like stop your whining. Look at that as an entire market in itself of like alcohol, sober curious, alternative alcohol, like that is a massive market. Approach that with its own unique go to market strategy. Um, coffee, stay all day. Approach that with a different one. Melatonin, right? That's a, a totally different approach with sleep. Laxatives the over abuse of that in the world of like over the counter supplements and our follow your gut blend. So there's just so like our TAM is so big. So it's almost kind of confusing sometimes. And that's what probably keeps me up is like how to approach totally. each product. Totally. We have so many products. Yeah. We have it's like, like 40. I just think about Chaga and like what they did with Chaga Chino. Right. And it's just like one, but someone's doing a whole business on just coffee. And, and they called it the Tragacino. And it's like, that's interesting. And so do you feel like you could, so an entrepreneurship, like Paul Graham, plant one flag at a time. Right. This right. person tells you, you have four flags that you could plant at one time and probably successfully. Yeah. That's hard, right? Very hard. Yeah. It's also a long game. Like, I think like, that's also the thing that we've learned is like, despite the growth that we've achieved, like we're a long game. Like we're creating a, a totally never done disruptive industry of preventative healthcare. Do you think it's faster if you pick <laughs> maybe not like coffee, one? but maybe like the sleep one and just go, look, we're going to attack this for this quarter. Right. It's going to bring in people from that world. Right. And we're already seeing the signals working. Right. Do you ever, 
Like, we do do that. So like January was Stop Your Whining. It was all about sober curiosity, 30 days oh, sober, dry January. Dry January. Yeah. And so okay. we do January as that. And then February is all about like libido and mood boosting and Valentine's Day and baby bloomers, Ooh, like smart. new moms. I like that. And then spring is all about skin and renewal. And then April was all about detoxification and going into summer. So we do focus on like an herb or blend of the month. And our content rotates with that. Do you as ever well. think about just creating separate brands? We do. We like do. Its own, its own gram, we its do. own thing. Yeah. I mean, that requires just money, <laughs> I think. Yeah. Like doubling down on like an apothecary. Like, so our advisory business, right? The education right. Another, side. That's another, right. It's a subsidiary of Apothecary Inc. So okay. it's, we've completely so created separate. a separate subsidiary. And so I think of that as like one leg of the stool and then our stores will be a second leg of the stool where you get last mile one, you mm -hmm. know, really quick delivery. So we'll partner with Uber Eats to do that with mm -hmm. like, like you forgot to order online and you want to get it right away. So using our stores as mini distro hubs and using the stores as custom blends. So we can actually make custom blends nice. for you yeah. with all the different herbs and we make a Diego blend. Yeah, right? I need a Diego blend. Exactly. You want some of my hair? <laughs> <laughs> That'll, that'll, right that'll, that'll come. That's that'll you. come. I'm, I'm in, by the way. And we're and we're gonna launch that probably in the next month or so. We, um, but we're launching a bunch of educational stuff first, like text-based herbalist consultations next week. So it's text-based. It's not. You guys don't have like an app. Your own little. Not yet. Not, do you want to do that? Is that something you'll you'll pursue? I mean, I maybe, maybe you could even partner. With, I mean, there's so many mental. There's so many apps. Yeah. Now. Yeah. I think. At larger scale, for sure. I mean, I think we need to do our new website first and our rebrand. So, like, our rebrand is going to open up and unlock a lot of the like changing inefficiencies. Name or no? no, it's okay. just changing the packaging. Like, our mouth, the mouth of this bottle is way too small. Like, we want an opening of like a spoon to just like fit in, right? This is like a mini juice bottle. I got this for my first business, <laughs> and so. We've come this far with this thing, but we want to make it just more accessible for the customer. Um, and frankly, like I think no one's done this before because the education piece is so expensive. It takes time. That that is our barrier to entry, but it's also the hardest part of the business. So that's what I like about the if if so I like I like the separate brand concept because you meet the customer with an already yeah. di self diagnosed problem, yeah. right? So for me, it's like I have coffee every day. So adding something to that is simple. Right. I can't sleep. Right. Solving that problem in a different way is simple. Right. You know, it just feels more efficient. Interesting. It's interesting. Yeah, that's an you know, interesting point. I could point. be totally off point, but like I just think about so what as you were yeah. saying and I was like how did I discover Chaga? Yeah. Literally the coffee shop and they were like, "Oh, this guy came in, he's got, you know, people put some Chaga in their coffee." And I just googled Chaga and I was like, "Yep." And we had him on our podcast and I love it. And so I've it, heard of the brand, it's great. It's yeah. like but it's also it's weird. It's like that's an interesting customer journey. Mm -hmm that when you think about it, it is not scalable and it's hard and it requires a whole team to be boots on the ground going to every coffee shop in LA right. doing sales convincing right. this people that probably don't know anything about adaptogens to, t to trust you yeah. test Put you some whatever in your coffee and right. then and then tell right. your, their customers about y you right. and so it's like what on earth is that right. it's hard right. but yeah, I don't. I just think about it's an interesting. I, mean, I don't know. I could be a rare. No, customer that's journey. a. It's a good point, and you see that a lot in the D 2 C space right now, right? It's like a ton of roll ups, like people like rolling up companies with like Thrasio is like a great example. But I will say is like we use our hero products as a gateway drug, like a quote unquote gateway drug, right? Where like they enter in through one of our top three SKUs, and then they expand the pharmacy. They're like, okay, this works. What else can I get? And then that's when they book the consultation too, because it's like, okay, I like this, but I don't know now for my hormones or my sleep. Or this. How how are they judging it works? They're just feeling better and, and they're giving that feedback or is it Yeah, like, it's mostly like for your feel. skeptical 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 yeah. box. Yeah. What is the thing that they go, oh? It's most so right now, to exactly to the point of like it's mostly been just like it's been two years since we've launched the company. It's only mostly have hit the curious and informed customers where they already kind of know. So for the skeptical ones, that's why we're doing that at home diagnostic test. And we're investing into some more before and after studies and like consumer studies of like holding a sample study of 300 people for do not disturb, wearing a wearable. And then after one month measuring like how better, how much more did you sleep? How much faster did you sleep? Did you wake up during the night? And like publishing that into a piece of content that is within the customer journey post-purchase. Well, listen, thanks for coming on the podcast. Tell everyone where they can find you and uh, where they can send you a hair sample. <laughs> <laughs>
That's awesome. You're going to get so much mail. I know, right? But like, let's hold off on the hair until September <laughs> yeah. when I have the test ready to go. Because otherwise, the USPS I, I, is going to look at you very differently. Yeah, I know. And I'm like, I can't really actually kind of cringy with hair. It's like, and feet and feet. <laughs> But anyway, uh, you can find me at uh, Shizio Kusa on Instagram if you'd like that or Apothecary Co., which is my company, A-P-O-T-H-E-K-A-R-Y-C-O on our handle um, or apothecary.co as our website. Hey, it's Owen and Oscar here. We just want to say thank you so much for making it to the end of the episode. If you want to see the full uncut, unhinged, unedited episode, go check out our paid model on Apple Podcasts. We can't wait to see you again next week and maybe Oscar will stay in my arms. <laughs> <laughs>